The Bronx Museum of the Arts has opened its doors to us for a preview of the exhibition Martin Wong, Human and Stomatic. It's the largest museum exhibition devoted to the artist's work to date, including about 100 works spanning from his earliest to his latest. We're greeted in the exhibition's first room by three fairly early paintings by Wong that introduce some of his favorite themes. Here we have Psychiatrists Testify, Demon Dogs Drive Man to Murder, in which he uses American Sign Language to spell out a tabloid headline about Son of Sam, a serial killer. In the center, we have My Secret World, 1978 to 1981, and at the far end, we have Tell My Troubles to the Eight Ball. Paintings within paintings was one theme that Wong followed throughout much of his work. And you can actually see psychiatrists testify and the eight ball painting both hanging on the wall within My Secret World, the painting at the center, which was actually inspired by Van Gogh's painting of his own bedroom. And it depicts a room in a hotel where Wong was staying for a few years while visiting New York. These paintings also introduce a great note of humor. On the window frame in My Secret World is painted the words, it was in this room that the world's first paintings for the hearing impaired came into being. Now, such a bold proclamation on the part of an artist just starting out could only be partly ironic, and also, he's talking about paintings for the hearing impaired and not the visually impaired, so presumably they could see just fine. Another feature of this exhibition is some materials from the Martin Wong archives at the Fales Library at NYU, and it allows us to see how closely Wong based some of his paintings on photographs. For example, we have one photograph of a man in what seems almost like a boxing pose, who would appear in a painting in front of a chain link fence. We have the subject for a painting called The Babysitter, a young man lounging in bed who you'll see elsewhere in a prison cell. We have some of the urban debris that shows up in his paintings of the Lower East Side a man on a motorcycle from behind, and his boyfriend in a fireman's hat in the tub. Wong was also interested in the prison as a metaphor for city life, inescapable, brutally difficult, and also with some of the same cast of characters, some of the tough customers on the Lower East Side who had served time in the prisons that he painted, such as the poet and playwright Miguel Pinheiro. And some of the visuals of prison bars are very closely echoed in the security grates of the facades of buildings on the Lower East Side here. Wong perhaps had a sort of romanticized view of the inside of a prison cell. Some of the men in the prison cells behind me don't look all that uncomfortable. And there was definitely some humor, raunchy humor, in his representation of prisons. In more than one of the paintings, there's a bar of soap, a clear reference to sex in prison. Wong was painting a poor neighborhood, the dirty, neglected, rundown Lower East Side. And as we see here, it seems as though whether it's a church or a storefront or whether you're in prison, everything's locked down. It seems as though to some extent, everyone's living behind bars of one sort or another. One of the revelations of the show is that it includes some of Wong's very earliest works, as well as some of his latest. We're in a small room that includes a number of self-portraits, some of them dating to when Wong was a child. In some of the earliest self-portraits, interestingly, he's actually painted his eyes completely black. What might it mean for such a young artist to paint himself in a way that his face becomes something of a mask? In addition to the early self-portraits, in a case over here, this exhibition includes an object in ceramic, which Wong actually actually studied at Humboldt State University, showing a number of skulls that refers perhaps to Himalayan motifs or the use of skulls in Mexican art. This small room at the end of the show includes some of Wong's final works. He was diagnosed as HIV positive in 1994 and moved back to San Francisco to live with his mother. These paintings are very distinct in their color scheme and their subject for many of his previous works. He actually painted some of the cacti and other succulent plants that his mother kept in the backyard there. 